Welcome. In this video, I would like to start the discussion about the so-called weighted least squares identification for linear models. What we have discussed so far is the ordinary least square solution where we have specifically assumed that our measurement noise, which we have depicted by nu, has a constant covariance. So that means that basically the impact of the noise, especially over time, over the different measurement samples, is a constant noise impact. Okay. In the reality in the field, however, it can may happen that we observe that over time the measurement noise might become, for example, as depicted here, larger and larger. For example, if a sensor degrades, over time, or for example, if the sensor shows an operating dependent behavior, operating point dependent behavior. In this case, which I've sketched here, which is the motivation for the WLS, the weighted least squares problem, which we will sketch in the following. We have basically the problem that our assumption A4, which we have previously introduced in the discussion of the properties of the ordinary least squares, is um, yeah, harmed, is violated. And we will assume that instead of our previous A4 assumption, we will have a modified assumption, which is that the variance of our measurement noise can be represented by a covariance matrix, which is capital R. And R is basically from the real numbers an N times n matrix, which is typically positive definite, and this is basically a representation of the noise impact, right? So basically for every measurement point 1 to capital N, right, if these are capital N measurement points, we have basically in deep in uh, per sample variance uh, information, right? Here we have the assumption that all measurement points are subject to the same noise characteristics and here we have a per sample noise characteristic which is represented by this covariance matrix R. Okay, that is basically the problem we want to deal with in modified assumption A4, a per sample variance represented by this covariance matrix R. In order to consider this in an improved way, because if we would apply the ordinary least square solution to such a scenario, we will actually also see in one of the examples in one of the following videos that this will lead to suboptimal results because the ordinary least squares uh, solution is not tailored to this application case. We can come up with a certain variant of our ordinary least square solution, which is a WLS. And this is subject to another loss function. Uh, and the new loss function is, as the name already suggests, a weighted loss with a weighting matrix W, or capital W, where we take here the matrix square root, times our model error, Y minus Z times W, again in the two norm, or quadratic two norm. And we can rewrite this a little bit more intuitive in terms or in contrast to this matrix uh, vector multiplication, which is y minus z times w transpose times capital W, so our weighting matrix, times y minus z times w. Right? So we have therefore to distinguish, this is a weighting matrix with n times n elements as well and our small w, this is our parameter vector with 
in total Q parameters which we want to identify, okay? So two W's, capital W, small W, completely different meetings, weighting matrix and parameter vector. Okay, so this is our cost function, a weighting option which we take into account. We will see just in a minute why this weighting option might be interesting for this problem, which I've sketched here as our motivation. But first I would like to solve this cost function and find W. And we can here also just follow our previous approaches because this new cost function with the weighting in the middle is still a quadratic cost function. So we can still solve it in a closed form using the gradient approach. So we calculate the gradient here again with respect to W and set that to zero. And what we get from that is our new solution W star WLS for the weighted least squares. And if we follow the derivation as previously, what we will get as a solution is Z transpose times capital W times Z inverse times Z transpose times capital W times Y. Okay, so quite similar to our ordinary least squares solution. But the only new aspects are here our weighting matrices W which come into the picture and as a special case if we would set W as the identity matrix then of course we would come back to the ordinary least squares solution. And the interesting thing is now why is that helpful in order to solve this problem which I've sketched here. The interesting thing is if I place or if I choose W, my weighting matrix, as the inverse of my covariance matrix, which represents the noise impact, so the noise impact of every sample or the noise severity of every sample, then one can actually show that with this modified A4 assumption and our previous assumptions, so that under the assumptions A1 to A4, let's call it A4 tilde, that the W L S is actually again blue, so the best linear unbiased estimator in this context of this modified noise impact. And why is that? I think that's quite easy if we just consider a simple example to see that. And my example is as follows. I say that my covariance matrix has diagonal form. So sigma 1 square to sigma n square with zeros above and below the main diagonal. So that would mean that all the um, measurement points would be uncorrelated in terms of the noise impact per uh, measurement sample. But it can vary per sample. So basically the sketch which we have seen here. And if I apply this weighting, then what we get so if we take the inverse from that, that is practically as this is a diagonal matrix that just the um, reciprocal uh, values of each uh, of the main diagonal elements. So one over sigma one square until one over sigma n square. And what does that mean to our example here? If the expected uh, noise variance per sample is high, we would weight this sample less. And if the expected variance per sample is rather low, we would weight it more heavily, right? So coming back here to our example, that would basically mean that these sample points, let's say where the noise 
represented by the variance is rather low, that the samples in our ordinary least squares problem would be weighted more heavily. We want to squeeze out the information out of this area of the samples. While in contrast, the samples here where the noise is obviously more heavy, where the covariance elements would be uh, um, higher, then we would weight these less. That means that we want to not take out the information of this area of the sample space. And this is already the meaning here of this weighting W is identical to the inverse of R. However, of course, this solution of the weighted least squares is independently of this choice. So this choice, which I've sketched here, leading to this blue uh, um, property, is just with respect to my motivational problem here. Of course, in a practical manner, you can take W um, also in, in other ways. For example, if you have an application-specific weighting problem where you say, okay, giving my application, I want that certain samples have more weights than other. For example, if you have a temperature model of some engineering system and you are interested in uh, preventing overheating, then it might be interesting to weight such samples more heavily, which are close to the over temperature limit compared to those samples which have been obtained at a colder system where um, the uh, system is not so heavily loaded. Okay, so therefore we can also utilize this degree of freedom for weighting in other scenarios than just this, let's say, academic scenario where only this noise covariance is changing in contrast to our ordinary least squares example. So therefore, weighted least squares offers many opportunities. We will see in the next video a certain example to compare the ordinary least squares against the weighted least squares. Thank you for watching and see you there.